Hey, what's going on guys? How is everybody doing? Kaching has been with us in Genshin Impact since the very beginning, but it's only now that she has her first appearance on her own banner, and for a lot of people, will be their first time acquiring this member of the Liyue Chising. As a workaholic, Kaching strives to maintain the status quo of Liyue, protecting it from hidden danger with the departure of Rex Lapis. We'll be talking about the stats you should be prioritizing, how to build your artifact sets, what weapons she will get the most performance from, and what talents you should focus on. We'll be judging these from a free-to-play level all the way up to an endgame primary hero. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Kaching has two main playstyles that we'll be looking into during this video both an Electro Damage Focus build and a Physical Focus build. Although she can apply Electro quite consistently, it should be noted that she only does so when she's on the field, and her skills and talents only relate to her, so it's advised to not consider her as a supporting character. The playstyles across her two roles play very differently and should be heavily considered before choosing which road to go down, because the way you build her will also differ drastically. As a physical main DPS, Kaching's main focus for her damage output will be her charged attack. Due to the high frequency you can perform these dual strikes and the increased damage scaling, this will be overall more effective than performing auto attacks. Though the main reason to go this route was because this was the only build that could properly use a 5 star weapon in Aquila Favonia, now that we have access to Summit Shaper and Primordial Jade Cutter that can increase the damage of the Electro build, that reasoning doesn't really hold much water anymore. The physical build is likely to be more effective when in combat with bosses or any enemy that generally stays in one place as this will make it much easier to perform your attacks, but also because you'll constantly run out of stamina and because you can't teleport to your stiletto or else you'll lose your physical damage bonuses, your mobility overall suffers with this build. In contrast with Kaching's Electro build, this setup is highly mobile, centering around her skill usage to teleport around the battlefield and infuse her blade with Electro energy. Since we're focusing on Electro damage, her burst will also deal far more damage than her physical counterpart, which instead will use it more for the added crit rate. The downsides to the Electro build revolve around the Electro element itself. For one, Electro reactions scale pretty poorly into the endgame since they can't crit and they can only scale with the triggering hero's level and elemental mastery. Her reactions can also fall to a lot of immunities. Her Electro damage has no effect on either the purple or yellow Electro slimes. Her overloaded reactions will not affect pyro slimes and superconduct will have no effect on cryo slimes. She can also be a mechanically difficult hero to play, so those who have trouble with fast inputs or making fast movement decisions may struggle to play her optimally. Though, because of this, she does have more play to her than other heroes that are currently in the game, which will certainly be a draw for those who can handle her. Kaching's basic attack is incredibly important to each of her primary builds as we previously discussed. Kaching has a basic 5-hit combo with her 4th hit dealing 2 separate strikes. Her charge attack, the focus of her physical build, actually deals three individual strikes. The first will base its damage on her first hit multiplier, with the following two strikes based on her charged attack damage multipliers. Just remember to manage your stamina so that you don't run out when you find yourself in need of a timely dodge. Kaching's skill is what turns her auto attack into an electro attack. Stellar Restoration has Kaching launch a lightning stiletto into the air in front of her and deals AoE electro damage when it hits its final target. This can also be aimed by holding her skill down for better placement or terrain traversal. The stiletto will stay in place until one of two things occur, the first being should you activate her skill again. Kaching will teleport to the stiletto and deal slashing damage to deal electro damage in a small area of effect. This will infuse her sword with electro upon unlocking her first passive talent. Kaching has a natural breaking point that allows a switch in for your supports. Since her Electro Infusion only lasts 5 seconds and her skill requires 7.5 on cooldown, which is incredibly convenient and essentially an in-game timer letting you know that it's time to refresh your support's abilities. The second being the option for physical builds, which is to use a charged attack. Kaching will stay in place, but her stiletto will deal a dual series of strikes dealing electro damage. This will not infuse Kaching's blade with electro damage, which is why it's the preferred attack for physical builds. Kaching's burst, Starward Sword, is probably the coolest looking burst in the game. She unleashes her full electro power, becoming but a hint of a shadow, and striking from the darkness, unleashing 8 slashes to nearby enemies simultaneously with one final slash that deals massive AoE electro damage. This attack will also be enhanced by her Ascension 4 passive, upon casting her burst, increasing her crit rate and energy recharge by 15% for 8 seconds. 
For talent prioritization, when focusing on a physical build, make sure to get her auto attack as high as possible, and for her electro, prioritize her burst first. Kaching's skill has the overall lowest increase of damage per level compared to her auto attack and burst, so in general it is okay to leave it more far behind than normal, as you'll get a larger increase in damage prioritizing one of her other two main attacks, depending on which build you're focusing on. We've discussed several positives and negatives for both Electro and physical builds, and unfortunately for the physical fans out there, and those with money to spend, Kaching's constellations will not be very kind to you and will instead give all of Kaching's love and support to her Electro followers. Constellation 1 causes the recasting of her skill to deal a small instance of Electro damage, both at the start and end locations of her blink. Constellation 2 gives Kaching a slight chance to generate an elemental particle when hitting enemies affected by Electro. Constellations 3 and 5 are our typical skill and burst promotions. Constellation 4 provides Kaching with a 25% attack boost for 10 seconds after triggering an electro-based reaction, an incredibly easy feat for such a nice reward. And finally, Constellation 6, her strongest, increasing her electro damage by 6% for 8 seconds upon initiating a normal or charge attack, skill or burst, all of which can be done independently of each other for a total of 24% increase. Just as Kaching's damage style is broken down into two sides of the same coin, so are her artifacts for her Electro and physical builds. The primary choice you have to make is do you go with a 4-piece set of Thunder Soother or a 4-piece set of Thundering Fury? Both have their strengths and both have their weaknesses. What this decision essentially boils down to, however, is who do you plan to pair her with? While Kaching will be doing Electro damage the majority of the time she's on the field, in the instance where you're prioritizing reaction-based supports. Think either Sing Cho or Zhang Ling, where we'd be going for either Electrocharged or Overloaded damage, it'll be far more beneficial to run the Thundering Fury set to take advantage of those reactions and increase their damage, while also reducing the cooldown of Kaching's skill. Not to mention, she still gets an added buff to her Electro damage. So, when would we choose to run Thunder Soother then? This would be the case if we decided to run a monotype team. Now, don't misunderstand my terminology here. By monotype, I don't mean that we're running four Electro heroes. Instead, I'm thinking of a team composition of two Electro and two Anemo heroes, two Geo heroes, or one or two Hydro units. This way, the reactions we're triggering won't actually remove the Electro status, allowing Kaching to take full advantage of the 35% damage buff. The set is more inconsistent though, since if you attack an enemy without a debuff applied, you are receiving no damage bonus, versus Thundering Fury, where even if you aren't triggering a reaction, you still at least get a 15% electro damage boost. For Kaching's physical build, her artifact sets gets a bit more complicated, assuming your goal is to find her ultimate best 100% final never gonna switch kit. So, that being said, if you want to take the easy road out and just have a solid artifact set that's good everywhere, Two Piece Bloodstained Chivalry and Two Piece Gladiator's Finale will give you just that. However, the two different routes we could go down for her physical builds are, are you planning on using her mostly for bossing, or to play against a lot of smaller mobs? In the former scenario, 4-piece Thunder Soother will be your most optimal set, whereas with the latter, 4-piece Bloodstained Chivalry will be your go-to as you'll need mobs you can defeat in less than 10 seconds to keep the 4-piece set bonus active. There's a lot of nuance to this discussion though about Kaching's best artifacts, so if you're looking to get a bit more in-depth information, I recommend checking out the Kaching Main's Discord server entire guide, which is basically the bible for any Kaching player. I'll leave the link to that in the description below. For her main stats, the builds remain the same across both builds, with an attack timepiece and a crit circlet. Keep in mind that Kaching already has crit damage as her ascension stat, but her cup changes depending on if you're playing an electro or physical build to that respective stat. Finally, we come to Kaching's recommended weapons. We'll start with her physical build. At the top of the priority list is Aquila Favonia. This is basically the reason to play a physical build. Tied for the highest base attack in the game, this weapon comes with physical damage as a substat and an additional 20% attack simply tacked on from the passive as well as having a built-in heal and AoE damage upon getting hit. Your next best choices will be the two newest swords, Primordial Jade Cutter and Summit Shaper. But what if you don't have access to any 5-star swords? Well, then Prototype Rancor, the Black Sword, and the Flute will be your next best options. For the best free-to-play option, however, Harbinger of Dawn will be your best choice if you don't have a prototype ready to go to build a Rancor, or you for some reason don't have the one the game forces you to build. 
And secondly, we have the weapon recommendations for Kaching's Electro build. While the overall recommendations don't change too much, the physical weapons we had on this list do drop off. This means that Primordial Jade Cutter is now our best in slot weapon, followed up by Summit Shaper, and now the Black Sword. For more accessible alternatives, Lion's Roar, Blackleaf Longsword, and the Flute are all your best options. Your budget option here, again, is the Harbinger of Dawn. Keep a lookout for my upcoming video going further in depth on all of Kaching's weapons, breaking down their overall damage, and how they stack up against each other. In conclusion, Kaching can suit those players looking for a more straightforward game plan or those who like to bounce around and stay highly mobile. Whether you like shocking enemies to death or slashing them into a million pieces, don't let her looks deceive you, Kaching is ready for battle. Hopefully you guys have found this guide useful and it will help you in building your own Kaching. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more content from me, head over to my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash xjazzy, or you can support me right here on YouTube by clicking that red subscribe button. Like the video if you liked it, and hitting that notification bell, that way you never miss a video. And if you want to join our community over on Discord, link as always will be down in the description below. But guys, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you did enjoy, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.